compartments are still open to keep your car running great. We are taking precautions to ensure the safety of you as well as our team. Please call or check our websites for the most current hours of operation. All of us at the Eide Family of Dealerships wish you and your family health and safety. Oh, we I'm Jeff Anderson. For 37 years, we have been fighting for survivors of child sex abuse. Even in these uniquely challenging times, we're still fighting with dedication and devotion. New York law gives survivors a chance to take legal action, but only for a limited time. If you were sexually abused by a priest, scout leader, coach, or teacher, contact us confidentially today. It's time. Getting back to normal may still take a while, but some things really can't wait. And fortunately, they don't all have to. If you were injured in a car crash or other accident, you can't afford to wait for the legal help you need. At William Matar, we're safely helping accident victims like you right now, 24-7 nights and weekends. We're always just a call or click away. Hurt in a car? Call William Matar, 585-444-4444. Zero. The smallest number can now make for the biggest savings at Hyundai. With zero interest for up to 84 months. Zero payments for 90 days. And thanks to Hyundai Assurance, zero worries with three years of complimentary maintenance. It's the final days of the Memorial Day sales event. But hurry, before the clock hits, well, you know. Get an Elantra for 0% APR for 72 months or lease for only $119 a month. Now, during the Memorial Day sales event. Welcome back. We are covering the unrest that's sweeping through parts of the greater Rochester area at this point. Initially, it was concentrated right in the Exchange Court Street area, right near the Public Safety Building. After police gained control of that area, we're now hearing about reports of disruption and destruction outside of that area. Close to there, over on East Main Street, right near the Liberty Pole, a store apparently has been looted. It's called The Villa. It's a sneaker store. That happened at least an hour ago. Not sure what that scene looks like at that corner right now. In addition to that, the Greece supervisor has said that there's been looting over on East Ridge Road, so activity up in... Arondequoit as well. He's telling people to stay home. They are going to issue a curfew at 9 p.m. in the city of Rochester. In addition to that, the newest information that we have from the mayor and from County Executive Adam Bellow, the Monroe County Executive, a state of emergency has been declared in our area, a state of emergency. So what does that entail? We're going to hopefully see when we talk to Mayor Warren and the police chief, Laurent Singletary, they are hoping to have a news conference starting in about nine minutes or so. We will, of course, take that live and get their messages and information, whatever they can offer. We will feed that directly to you. We are not the only city that's seeing this type of activity right now. A lot of this started in Minneapolis after the death of George Lloyd, George Lloyd being the African-American man who died in police custody. It has spread since then. We've seen unrest, activity outside of Minneapolis in Atlanta, over in L.A., and New York City. We have some video of New York City, the protests going on there. Specifically, there's video that's causing a bit of controversy and maybe perhaps fomenting some of the unrest that we're seeing. It's this officer pushing a girl, and the slow-mo video is there, a protester at the scene. This is just one incident amongst many in which there's been violence, some of it coming from the side of police, uh, some of it coming from the side of protesters towards police as well in all areas that we've been monitoring. But this particular video has caught fire, if you will, and now the Attorney General of New York, Letitia James, has gotten orders from the governor, Governor Cuomo, to look into what happened there. Again, that's over in New York City. That is not here in Rochester. Everything we're hearing now 
is that there haven't been any serious injuries in our city, which is good news if true. But again, this is all happening so fast. There's so much chaos involved that we're not exactly clear on everything that's happening. There are rumors that there are hot spots popping up in Greece. Unclear, unconfirmed. We hope to get more information on that from Mayor Warren and from the police chief, Laurent Singletary, perhaps Bill Rylick, the supervisor over in Greece, can talk about that. But Dave Seeley, the supervisor in Irondequoit, already talking about some of the unrest in his area as well. All of this following, if you're just tuning in, a peaceful demonstration that began at 1 o'clock today. Despite the rain, more than 1,000 people turned out right over at Martin Luther King Jr. Park. A gentleman, by the way, who talked about nonviolent demonstration. And they kept to that for hours, even when they walked across the bridge over to the public safety building. And there they had speakers, some from the police accountability board, talking about the changes that they'd like to see in the relationship between police and the communities they serve. And then something happened. We're not exactly sure what, but right around the 5, 6 o'clock hour, tear gas was sent into the crowd. We saw at one point a crowd surrounding a police officer. You saw a bit of that there, uh, yelling, Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter. And right at the monument over at the public safety building, on which are etched the names of police officers who have died in the line of duty, is BLM spray painted on there. What you're seeing now is what we captured just about an hour or two ago, and that is, yep, those are the cars that were flipped over. Some of them were torched, and the Rochester Fire Department, they were able to get in there and put those out. So the crowds you see now, just north of the Frederick Douglass, Susan B. Anthony Bridge, they are no longer there. This is file footage. What you see now, if we were to look out there, you see a perimeter set up by police in riot gear. You have mounted patrol going through. So just to the east of the public safety building, that is secure. What's happening outside of there? It's unclear. A lot of scanner traffic, as you might imagine. There's a curfew at 9 o'clock. How that will be enforced? we'll have to wait and see. Whether there will be anything that will need to be enforced, we'll have to wait and see because as of now, with the large concentration of people broken up, the question becomes what exactly is happening? How large of an issue do we have on our hands right now? It is interesting that we are seeing this given that last night when so many other cities were experiencing this kind of tumult, we were not. It was uh, fairly quiet and the demonstration today started off just that way. We did see last weekend those fights that broke out, one happening on Memorial Day over at the Charlotte Pier that does not appear to be linked to any of these demonstrations, but clearly police have been called in to act upon this. And all of this, by the way, I just got an email in from the Monroe County Health Department and they gave us the fresh numbers for COVID-19. Zero deaths zero deaths over the last 24 hours, more proof that we have made headway in fighting this virus. We were able to enter phase two yesterday, so you're getting notes from your salon or your barber shop, perhaps saying, make your appointment, come on in. In two weeks, we might even be able to go to phase three, which would include some restaurants and things like that. So here we are advancing into a situation where we might have this pandemic in our area somewhat under control and now we're seeing crowds of people without masks gathering close together and one has to wonder what the impact of that will be when some of these folks go back to their homes and who knows we see how contagious this virus is what you're seeing right now is another live look right outside the public safety building as we await the news conference with mayor warren and police chief laurent singletary they have declared a state of emergency in the city of Rochester. This live look, you see the police have secured the area fairly well. This is just north of the famous and historic Corn Hill area. Not sure if there's been any looting or any vandalism in that area. Obviously, those buildings extraordinarily historic and significant in our area. There you see the Corn Hill. So if you just go under that bridge, you're right by the river and you're passing homes that are just chock full of history. And we are making history here tonight, watching this, watching police respond to what was a peaceful demonstration devolve into something else. The helicopter has been up in the sky for the last two or three hours. Not sure if that's still there or not, but clearly this section is 
clear. We do not see any uh, protesters or vandals in that area, but we are hearing about other spots. Jack Watson is out in the field. He's starting to investigate. If you try to go into downtown Rochester, you're not really going to be able to find a spot in. I was able to drive up Union Street right near the, the brewery there, Rock City Brewing, and the Museum of Play. You can't get in. The closest you can get is maybe Sio Street, but beyond that, if you want to keep going on East Ave into the city, you're going to have difficulty doing so. The state police have been called in. Not sure if we've got any messages in from Governor Cuomo at this point. It's also unclear what's happening in other upstate cities, Syracuse, Buffalo. I'm trying to find out what's happening there. If you do know, please feel free to tweet me. I'm checking my Twitter right now. As far as the outlying areas, we do know that East Ridge Road in Irondequoit has been hit by looters, and the supervisor there is telling everybody, please stay at home. Businesses, please close down. Possibly some activity over in Greece, but we're not sure. Not sure what's happening up on Main Street, which is the main artery through the city of Rochester. As far as we know, 490, which is the overpass, the artery, if you will, that goes over the city of Rochester, still appears to be open, but many streets all over the city of Rochester are closed down. As far as neighborhoods, we're not sure. Over near Wilson Magnet on Genesee Street, unclear what's happening there, trying to follow the scanner on what's going on there. Up in the Crescent area, one has to think there might be some activity because of what's happening in Irondequoit. Irondequoit just north there, we're talking about the 104th and South area. So we'll have to check in on what's going on up in that part of the city of Rochester. We're not exactly sure. And that's part of this whole issue is the chaos involved, whether we're going to see any more violence throughout the evening. The mayor of Rochester clearly hoping that isn't the case. That's why she said in about 50 minutes, they're going to close things off. You're supposed to be in your home, 9 p.m. A curfew has been set. We don't see that all that often in our area, but here we are seeing it now. I want to take another live look out at the exchange and Court Street, we do not have the shot right now. A lot of our live capabilities, our resources are being pulled inside to be dedicated to the news conference there. We have heard of a lot of unrest that started last night in various cities like Atlanta and LA, moving into other cities, more than 200 arrests in New York City. That video we've already taken a look at. I do want to take a look at some of the peaceful protests, which is why this all started, which began at 1 o'clock today over at Martin Luther King Jr. Park. That was organized, and we saw a huge number of people, more than a 1,000 people, different races, different ethnicities, pushing through the rain, wearing their masks, carrying the American flag, their signs. Things appeared to be going in a proper path. They were getting their point across, very upset over George Floyd's death, saying it's representative of the injustice that they have experienced or read about or seen throughout their lives. And then something happened, and we're going to have to ask the mayor and the police chief what exactly happened that turned the tide that made our city resemble those across the country and across the state because we're seeing similar things happen in New York City. Everything happening with George Floyd, not necessarily unheard of in our area. As I mentioned before, we had the issue with Christopher Pate and others. Christopher Pate was uh, beaten up pretty badly by police. And then the police officer, Michael Sippel, was actually charged with assault in that case. We saw the Police Accountability Board vote last November. A lot of people hoping that that would bring some parity to the system and discipline officers. The police union worried that this civilian review board would discipline officers who didn't deserve to be disciplined. In addition to that, they worried that it goes against the contract that they hold with the city because according to the city charter, the mayor and the police chief are the only two who can discipline officers unless they appoint somebody and the PAB wasn't appointed. A judge agreed, and so the PAB lost its teeth. They are not allowed to discipline officers, but they have certainly been vocal over the last 24 hours. They issued a statement last night condemning the death of George Floyd and calling for change in the city of Rochester. One of their members, from what I understand, was out talking to the crowd before things turned into what it did earlier today. Whether we're going to hear from them again tonight is yet to be seen. 
A state of emergency has been called in our area, in Rochester, to refresh your memory if you've been watching. If you haven't, again, a state of emergency, what that entails, what that means for folks living in the city and outside the city, we're going to have to wait to see from the mayor of Rochester. She is set to speak any minute. They were supposed to begin first at 745. That got pushed back to 810. It is now 813, going on 814, and we're going to have to hear from them. And actually, here we go. This is the mayor of Rochester talking about the unrest. We have to change. As our city, our state, as our nation, as a society, as one 